One, this is Brian. Today is Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. And I'm here in my home city, Santee, right across the street from West Hills Park. I'm at this place called Santee Boulders. It's supposed to be a pretty popular place for people to climb rocks, boulder, scramble. There are a lot of boulders in the area. So I'm here to kind of check it out, but also to see if I can get up to a couple of hilltops in the area. There are a couple of small hills above the boulders. So I'm going to see if I can maybe work my way up there. Let's we'll see how this works out today. Yeah. People have been might have been following my channel realized I haven't been uploading new video in a while. It's been weeks since I've been out on the trail. To be honest with you, some things have been going on. And I just haven't had the motivation to get out for a few weeks. So almost happened again this week. This would have been five weeks in a row. So I figured it's Wednesday. I go back to work tomorrow. So let me get an early crack at it today. So I can at least get something in before I go back to work. And starting next week... My days off are going to change. So, luckily they'll still be together. And my days off will be Wednesday, Thursday. So most of my hiking videos will thus take place on Wednesday now instead of Tuesday. So, yeah, we'll see how that works out. And plus, yesterday was, yesterday was actually pretty hot for this time of year. And today's supposed to be hot too, so that's why I'm handling it now while temperatures right now are in probably about 45, 46 degrees right now. Nice and cool out here. So I'm handling business now because I do have to work tomorrow. And I do have a couple things, a couple small errands to run later. And plus, I just don't want to be out in the heat. So, let's see how this goes today. So I don't know... I know this land is privately owned, but it is open for people practicing their bouldering spots, their bouldering and everything. So I'm wondering if this is open, if I can access at least one of the few hills above here for some peak climbing today. There's a small hill roughly off to the northwest of here. None of these are on Peak Bagger. None of these peaks on Peak Bagger. One of them is 685 feet in elevation. And one of them is 833 feet. So let's see. Very beautiful out here in the Coastal sage grub fully verdant from February and March's copious rains. We even had a little bit earlier this month over the weekend. We had a smaller storm. And we also have another chance for rain, albeit much lighter, this weekend as well which should prolong the dry season's desiccating effects a little bit longer. Because now usually once we're going well into April, we're rainy season faucet usually starts shutting down. So whatever we can get before the next La Nina sets up, which is looking likely this year, which 
not guaranteed, but typically, typically sees us very with very dry winters. So last year was a major exception, though. It was the third La Nina year in a row, and yet we we made out like bandits last winter too, with copious rainfall and mountain snows. <clears throat> So, we'll see how it pans out. I mean, I can see why this is a really prime bouldering spot. It's where people probably practice and work on their rock climbing and scrambling skills. There are lots of cool boulders around here. Some huge ones, too. If I remember correctly, this area gets some pretty good reviews for scramblers and boulders. And climbers so that's all pretty cool actually I'm not a big scrambler or boulderer myself but I can appreciate some of that Ooh, what kind of shrub do we have blooming over here look at this Ooh. We got a sack of peyote, Cortia, mac Cortia microcephala. In about a month or two, that thing will be over our head in blooming. Only seen those a few times. Looks like a very large everlasting. I thought that was going to be a spine shrub, Adolphia, but now that's a type of everlasting, Pseudonephalium. Not too fluent in my pseudonephaliums, but they do pop up quite a bit here. So, I'm trying to think. I think this is. I think this is the direction I want to head. So let me go down this drainage here and take a look. I believe Hill 685 is probably going to be that one there, and there's one up there. It's about 833 feet. That one's getting close to, I think, it was a landfill site, so that might be a potential access issue. It's pretty close, but it's not exactly inside of it, so I'm going to take a look and see how that pans out for me. All right. So I'm going to start working my way around this and see how this goes today. It's nice to finally be out for the first time in a long time. Yes, we are now on a shadier north-facing slope, and the coastal sage grub's getting really thick and dense. Let's see here. I know there's supposed to be some crisscrossing trails around here. So it's probably worth a little bit of exploration as well. Wow, look at this. The fragrance here is very, very intoxicating because there's a lot of this growing around here. Our beautiful California sagebrush fully decked out in a spring jacket of foliage. Artemisia californica. What a beauty. Look at that. They're all rich green. It's about that grayish cast, but usually during the wet season, there's less of a reason for them to use their grayish hues to reflect the excess sun because there's a lot of moisture in the soil this time of year. That's why they look a lot mintier and a lot greener this time of year when everything's where they're full of that life giving water in their tissues. Later on, towards June, they're going to turn a lot more of a grayish color. So let's see. Let's see if there's a trail going this way. I've been kind of thinking about doing this hike for a while last few weeks so I'm finally out here doing it finally all I'm gonna do is just find a trail that goes up that ridge there that should lead me to hill 685 nothing major today just 
something to get me outdoors for a few hours before the sun heats up. Uh, yeah, this is beautiful over here, I'll tell you. Very beautiful. Yeah, these boulders are really cool to look at. Like I said, I'm not a mountaineer or boulder climber, but I do appreciate their natural aesthetic, believe me. San Diego County has a lot of these hills that are covered even more densely, literally in boulder forests. Examples are El Cajon Mountain, Woodson Mountain, even parts of Iron Mountain. A lot of the inland uh, foothills and lower mountains are, are just literally peppered with thousands of these large boulders. Oh, there's even a, a, oh, there's even a little brook in here. Wow, that is so dope. There's a little brook in here too. Okay, I didn't expect that. Get over it really quickly. All right, so I'm gonna go branch up this way. Wow, I did not expect a little brook. I think what I should have done was come visit this yesterday evening. This would probably be a prime herping spot. Lizards, snakes, possibly toads. This would be a really good herping spot, actually. I can guarantee that. Yeah, that's pretty neat. All right, so I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to branch up this way, take this use trail. See if I can get up to that hill. That's cool. There's even a little brook in the middle of the, the drainage down there, which I think is pretty awesome. All right. Really beautiful out here. This time of year, especially because it's so verdant. Who knows, this time next year it might not be so verdant. I'm expecting that a third year in a row is probably not going to happen. It's not guaranteed not to happen. But with La Nina, the odds are pretty high on it being pretty dry. Alright, so we're kind of climbing out of the sage grub into grassland now. Not native grassland. So, basically, we have two ridges. I'm hiking up this way, even though Hill 833 is going to be atop this ridge here before, I believe it's the Sycamore Canyon landfill site. I want to get to Hill 685 first because it's on the way there in a way. I just get up to the top, 685, dip down. Hill 685 has very little prominence. It's the top of a hill. It's good enough for me. Dip down a little bit and then connect to that ridge there. And there should be use trails all over. Looks like we've got an Audubon's cottontail chilling over at the base of the rocks. Just looking at me. Already seen a few of them already. Very common sight here in Southern California see those rabbits. Being a wildlife lover, that's all good for me. But again, I'm guessing this would be some great herping habitat. Especially if I could find small debris on the ground underneath which 
might be a snake or maybe a skink or a alligator lizard. Really cool to see a salamander. Haven't seen one in years in the wild. Last time I see one here in Southern California was actually my family and I, this is back in 1994 when I was about 12 years old. We were looking for places to rent and my parents were inside checking out the place and I was out in the front yard looking underneath stuff. Found some garden slender salamanders. That was the only type of salamanders I've seen in the wild here in Southern California. And I mean that loosely because most of the salamanders I've seen were in suburban yards. Even though I have seen a couple garden slenders in San Clemente Canyon under a log. All right, I'll continue that thought momentarily as I climb up this. All right. Let's see where I am in relation to the peak. It's about a 300 foot elevation gain from the park which sits at about 380 feet above sea level. And the summit is at 685. It's a pretty gentle ridge climb to get up here. But also, looking at getting up there, I know there's supposed to be, according to Google Earth, a couple spots along there that could vie for the high point. But I'm trying to go for the high point that's more towards the intersection of ridges. As I was looking on Google Earth, further to the south along the ridge, a bunch of little structures. I don't know if there's private property stuff, and I don't want to mess with that. That's a pretty happy rent it bird. Always love that sound. If I'm hearing that sound, chances are just about 100% that I'm in a good mood. Because I'm doing something I love. Out in nature, walking, hiking. Of course, enjoying the birds. Alright. It's a pretty easy walk getting up here. Nothing strenuous. Been a few weeks since I've been out hiking, so looks like I gotta get back in the flow of it again. Very short drive from my house, so definitely worth coming out here. Now, as I climb up this hill, I just noticed the temperature has gone up a lot, more like in the 50s here maybe upper 50s down in the ravine cold air drainage so it's obviously cooler it's effective microclimates deals with the principle of colder air being denser and thus sinking while warm air rises common driver in our weather patterns Ah, it's pretty cool. It's a nice ridge. Let's see. I'm near the peak already. Oh, this would be a short one. All right. Well, here we are already. 
first summit of the day. Still 685. Pretty cool. Summit number one. I'll probably do a lot of the viewpoints up here because the possibility might not be able to get over there is always there. So that's the landfill site. So we're going to start off. We're going to be looking west. We're going to start off to the west. And that down there is kind of a northern extension. Parts of this are northern extension of Mission Trails. Or, uh, or it's, well, it's connected to Mission Trails, but it's, I don't know if it's actually part of the agency. I hear some recent places it is, some places it isn't. I've actually been down underneath the 52, parked at East Fortuna, went under the 52, and walked a little bit up one of these hills. That's where I saw some pretty cool plant sightings and everything. But, all right, well, so these are some of the hills north of Mission Trails. Once you get over towards that way, a little bit further, you're officially on uh, Camp Pendleton. And that's a big no-no, if you're a civilian, especially if you're a civilian. All right, so a little bit more to the south, the west-southwest. Now we're really full-blown Mission Trails, North Fortuna Mountain there at 1291 in elevation. Then in the middle there is Fortuna Saddle. Now we're looking more towards the southwest. Then we got South Fortuna Mountain right there at 1,094 feet. Swinging it around for Kwai Pai Peak there center stage at 1,194 feet, 100 feet higher than South Fortuna. Then we got Mission Gorge Road cutting in between Kwai Pai and one of the higher peaks of Mission Trails, right there. Piles Peak at 1,379 feet. Then we're swinging it a little bit more to the south-southwest. And we're looking at Peak 1380, right there. And then of course, center stage now is Coles Mountain. Now we're going to swing it more toward the south. And we're getting some pretty good views opening up here. So now we got... Mount Helix right there in La Mesa. And then we got San Miguel Mountain right there between Chula Vista and Hamul. And then Otai Mountain over there behind it, closer to the border. And then we got Big Bad Kachama right there, or Takate Peak. A peak I still have to climb one day, and I hope to. And then we got the big rounded lump looking more towards the southeast now of Lion's Peak. Then I believe the pointy one is McGinty. And then we got Lawson and Gaskill Peaks over there. And now we're looking east towards Corte Madera and Los Pinos Mountain. And I don't want to get the sun too much in in the frame but behind that ridge in the foreground is Viejas Mountain okay and swinging it around to the east northeast and now to the northeast is more of the ridge line so I guess I better take my summit selfie before I forget and then I'll see if I can access that hill over there Okay, so I'm leaving the summit now. If I'm able to get up to 833, I'm probably, I'll probably do a little bit more of an east northeast pan. Because there's still some stuff behind this hill here, worthy of noting. But again, I'm trying to stay far away from the landfill site. Let's see, I think this is going to dip down to this little swale here. And it should meet up with the ridge. I gotta be 
careful I don't get the sun to everybody's eyes here. So yeah, like I said, this peak here, Hill 685, doesn't have a huge amount of prominence, as you will evidently see here. So we're dropping down. But a hill is a hill, and being on top of a hill for me is a great feeling. Now we're gonna go into this little canyon here and see. Very bright and beautiful spring grasses so let's see we got this little track going up the hill here let's see how this works should be interesting so this is the back side of hill 685 now on to hill 833 so far it looks okay. Got a nice little climb up ahead of us. Dip down a little bit, so now we're gonna probably, probably climb about maybe about 200 feet to get up to the ridge. So I'm gonna get up to I believe the northern the northernmost part is the high point, I believe. Maybe a foot or two taller than a couple of vying high points along the ridge but I see some structures over towards that side, so I'm gonna stay away from those. Cool. Nice open country out here. Wow, yeah. Nice little canyon here too. All right, well, I'll keep you posted once I get up towards this ridge line. Enjoy these canyon views, a little saddle here. There's my first hill right there. All right. Pretty cool. All right, I'll keep you posted. All right, so I've been climbing up this. I just built a rock duck, rock duck up here. Pretty cool. Pretty interesting. Very well balanced too. Noticing a ton of these guys here. They're coastal deer brooms here. Acmispon glaber, variety glaber, and bloom. Little guys. Little pea family subshrubs. They have the traditional pea shaped flowers on them. There's just a lot of them lining this little path up here. It's very hardcore disturbed soil here. So most of this is basic grasses. I think these are Avena grasses. I think these are the oak grasses, Avena. I'm not sure what species. Maybe Avena barboa or barbata or Avena fatua or something like that. <clears throat> Grasses are not my strong suit in my botanical knowledge base. And then we got a few of these guys, Laurel Sumacs. Oh yeah, there's a Laurel Sumac and a Toyon. The lower shrub's a small Laurel Sumac and there's a medium-sized Toyon right above it. More of the woody shrubs are actually down in the drainage because it's very dry up here. Oh, Bahiopsis lasciniata. San Diego bush sunflower. Budding out right now for spring blooms. Yeah, a lot of things bloomed a lot later this year. Maybe it's because the rainy season was back ended. More towards the middle and latter part. 
could be a possible reason. I think last winter was a cooler winter overall, but this past winter that we just left had quite a few periods of cooler than average weather too. Especially February and on. Not to say we didn't have warm weather. Well, right now we're basically going into mid-April, so we're a nice chunk of the way into spring. Yeah, I see a fence coming up here. Let me see. of school bells up here quite a few of them at least used to be known as the Kelostema Capitatum Capitatum now been changed to the genus to Terastema Here we are, Hill 833. Yeah, there are a bunch of structures over there, so I'm not gonna dare go over there. All right. Oh, this is Hill 833. Like I said, there are a bunch of weird structures. I don't know what they are, so I'm not gonna go over there. A little rock pile over here. There we are, Hill 833. Pretty cool. All right, so we do get some more eastern views. Sorry for the sun, but. We're looking north, east, northeast, Viejas Mountain just about under the sun, Cuyamaca Peak in the center right above the shrub, and then El Cajon Mountain just left of the shrub, and then more to the northeast, Iron Mountain, North Iron Mountain, and Woodson Mountain over in Poway. And there's some higher hills over here, but like I said, I'm not going to go and no trespassing over there. All right, let me get a picture. I'm gonna start working my way down. Maybe some more botany on the way down, actually. There we are. That was the first hill I climbed right there. First hill of the day. Pretty cool. Hill 685. So I'm assuming I'm probably going to have to climb back over it. Ooh, here's some more Bahiopsis lasciniata blooming. Or starting to get ready. Well, yeah, starting to bloom. Pretty cool. Starting to get some bloom action here. Definitely a little bit later of a start for a lot of these plants. I wonder what those structures are. I kind of looked at them on Google Earth, and that's kind of why I didn't want to walk along that ridge because of that. I didn't want to get close to that stuff. Who knows what it is? <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> I mean, curious, but not enough to 
trespass to get to it. All right, I'll work down this steep hill here. I'm assuming I'm probably gonna have to climb back over hill 685. Yeah, yeah. I'll just have to re-summit 685 real quickly. Well, I guess the backside's a lot lusher, as you can tell. Here, that's a north-facing slope right there. Even though we just had some rain a couple days ago, this hillside right here has dried out quite a bit. Since this gets a lot of insulation from the strong April sun, this side and the south slopes dry out. A lot more quickly. Ooh, it's slippery. Oh boy. Huh. Well, you can tell the vegetation's a lot lusher down there. I guess with a better soil profile, a lot of those plants can recover much more quickly from disturbance than on these drier south and west facing slopes. Seen down there. All right. Well, keep working my way down this, down to the saddle, and work my way over Hill 685. It's a very small climb getting back up to that. And we'll see on the way down what other cool things we could find. So I'm just about at the 833-685 saddle. I'm gonna see if I can get a view down this canyon. A little closer at hand, maybe. Let's see. Just a quick little view. Ah, pretty nice. Very verdant here. That's where I just was visiting, just up there. That's where that bush is up on top there. Nice. Very nice. All right. So I'm going to start climbing back over 685 and then start working my way back down. these crazy grasses here or get my pants all soaked there's a lot of dew on the grass so that's this big offshore winds that were hitting probably the offshore winds that were hitting uh, orange and la counties didn't make it down here it didn't get as desiccated here there's a Nice looking laurel sumac right there. Pretty handsome shrub. All right, so we're taking the next climb up to, back up to 685. Then time to start working my way down. Back on the summit of Hill 685. Now, time to start heading back down the canyon here. Get back towards Mass Boulevard, where, where the park is. right next to the high school. Some great views of Mission Trails, I'll tell you. This park, this little spot. Great views of Mission Trails Regional Park. 
west towards uh, some of the upper mesas of San Diego. Over that way. Wow, oh, yeah, pretty, pretty impressive views. For two peaks, two small hills that don't have a lot of prominence. Boy, <laughs> the views are pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Here we are not even on the top of them. And yeah. Pretty impressive, I have to say. I am not disappointed. Plus, I was on top of a couple of hills. So that's usually enough to get me excited. I'm a simple man. I'm a very simple man. I don't need lots of material things. Just the ability to get out and surround myself with this. Now, of course, maybe I'm slightly, I used to be a little more materialistic in the sense of having huge, huge music collection, but, but, and then also somewhat materialistic in the sense of having hundreds of native plants growing at home. But I'd rather have that than all the jewels and blingage and a lot of that other stuff that a lot of other people want or seem to pursue. I think I'm going down a slightly different way. It's a little different here. I'm going down a slightly different path actually. Okay, well, yeah, it was definitely not this, uh, this vegetated. I think I went up that ridge there. I think that's, I think that's where I went up. Yeah, okay. And I'm still heading down, still heading down towards where I wanted to go. I think this is a different ridge. Oh, well. Maybe this is the same one. Yeah, because I just about yeah, this is the same way I went up. <laughs> I must be tripping today. Oh, okay. Now I haven't pointed it out yet, but it's time to now. There's a quite a quite an abundance of this beautiful purple flower here. This is California four o'clock or California wishbone bush. Very common plant in this area. That's Mirabilis livus variety crassifolia, one of a few species of Mirabilis that are found here in Southern California. This one is your predominant coastal, coastal side of the mountain species and variant. There are a couple other varieties of Mirabilis, Mirabilis livus that grow here too, but the predominant one here on the coastal side seems to be variety crassifolia. Crassifolia meaning thicker leaf and Mirabilis kind of dealing with the term like a Latin term for like spec like a spectacle or note very noteworthy very look worthy that it is <laughs> beautiful ephemeral plant that leafs out in the winter rains flowers late winter into spring set seed and then the above ground tissues dry up in the summer dry season and go dormant and then die back to the root and then the root produces more stuff the next rainy season. So. Very noteworthy plant growing here. Very common one. As we now get back towards the boulder field All right, well, I'll see you down by some of these boulders. All right, back at the granite boulders. I'm trying to see if there's some interesting stuff happening around here. Again, during periods of low human activity, I imagine 
This would be a great herping spot. Well, I see some. Well, I see some. Some more rabbits. Some more Silvalagus. Looks like Silvalagus Adamoni. At least a threesome there. Which is pretty neat. See him hopping on the boulders. Which would also mean this would probably be a good crotalid spot. And what I mean by crotalid spot. <laughs> Rattlesnakes, since they love eating rodents and rabbits. These huge large granite outcrops would be pretty good spots to see sunning herps. Might be a little early right now because it's still a coolness in the air. But this is when you'd expect to start seeing things getting ready to come out and bask. I'm wondering if this would be good habitat for Scaloporus or Cuddy, the granite spiny lizard. This is where I expect to see granite spiny lizards. I didn't think that they would grow this close to the coast, but apparently they've been vouchered on iNaturalist in Mission Trails. So this could be very well a great granite spiny lizard habitat might be a little early I don't see any lizards at all actually right now I don't see any lizards wow that's pretty cool nice view from this rock I'll tell you now you can see where people put their little hooks and everything to anchor so they can belay and rope their way up these but yeah coming here probably in about an hour or two oh there goes another audubon i think that's an audubon we might also have bachman's rabbit down here too we might have them too Silvalagus bachman -y. i think they're supposed to be pretty similar but you can see there's one cottontail right down there just hopping among the laurel sumac and the rock yeah, this would also be very good pit viper. A good pit viper spot. Right now, they might not be ready to come out and quite bask yet. But if there are rabbits here, gotta be uh, rattlesnakes and larger herps. I'm trying to get myself out there more to to do herp herp walks and stuff like that because that would be pretty uh, pretty awesome to get out and see some herps I love plants believe me I love our plants but I also love herps reptiles amphibians and this would be a really good place to do it when people aren't climbing boulders all day all right, well, botanically speaking, found ourselves found myself a hoary bolzia right here in, right against the rock in this grass. This is bolzia incana. It's a very small weak winter slash early spring annual in the carrot family, the Apiaceae. And that's called hairy or hoary bolzia. I've only seen this one a couple times. I haven't seen it very much, but and they got these little almost maple shaped leaves oppositely arranged it's a member of the carrot family pretty cool pretty cool I don't see that one very often all right well I'm gonna kind of work my way around I might just putz around here for a few minutes and see if I can find anything else All right, so here I'm coming towards the backside of these rocks. And here's a plant that loves to grow right next to rocks, especially on the shady side of them to keep their roots a little moister. This is California figwort, Scrophularia californica. It's already blooming too. These little pinkish, reddish flowers that don't really open up too much. But it's a really cool plant. 
It likes to grow a lot of times. Coastal sage, grub, chaparral, sometimes even up, even up into the conifer forest of the higher mountains. And you'll see them, especially where there are lots of boulders. You can see some growing right out of here too. And there's a really hefty looking broom backerus right here too. This one's got a nice solid size, sized set of trunks. Very solid set of trunks. Very handsome. Obviously stays lusher here because its roots are in the shade of the rocks, allowing the moisture to stay longer in the soil, keeping, the, keeping that plant a lot lusher and happier. But yeah, you can see on the back side of the rocks, a lot lusher. I even see a blue elderberry mixed in with the laurel sumacs over there, so that's a pretty good indication. So let's see, let me start working my way down to some of the other sets of boulders and see if I could find any interesting plants and critters. That's another reason why I'm really glad I hit up this spot, because this would probably be a good spot to check out a lot of critters too. Around the other side of these boulders, yeah, right in the shade of these laurel sumacs, there's more of that Bolzia incana plant growing right here. Look at that, there's quite a bit of it here, actually. Yeah, that's so cool. That's so cool. I've only seen, like I said, I've only seen that one a couple times in my life. Let's see, what's what's going on over here? This looks pretty interesting. Now these, a lot of where these cracks are, yeah, I'm guessing this would probably be prime Scaloporus arcutti habitat. The uh, granite spiny lizard. Like I said, right now, this time of day might not be optimal, but. Later on in this morning, probably would be pretty cool to see. Tell the soil right here keeps getting disturbed a lot. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool spot over here. Sometimes, even after climbing a hill, I just sometimes after the hill, AKA the business part of the hike is concluded, me getting to a new hill or whatever, I don't like to have the poke around and explore a little bit phase, which is what this is. To add a little extra dimension to my videos. Lots of cracks, good places for granite spinies to hide. pretty neat. Again, it's a little early, so I'm not expecting much to be up and about right now, but I'm going to start working my way down this hill a little bit. I think there's more bolsia over here, too. More of that hoary bolsia plant. Yeah. Actually, a lot of it around here. That's what all this is here, basically. This is all, well, just about all of it's Bolzia Incana. Pretty cool. Look at this. This is so cool, just to explore this stuff. Yeah, I'm not really a rock climber or major rock scrambler. I'll do some class two or maybe some basic easy class three to get to the top of a peak but I do like being around these boulders because you can find some really cool plants and animals hanging out and about wow look at this great herping habitat here I'll tell you Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's beautiful over here, actually. Wow, these 
boulders are for, for real. These boulders are for real. They're dope. They're beautiful. Love complicated, rugged landscapes. All right. I think I'm going to work my way and see a couple other boulders before I start moving on. See what else I can find here. All right, now we're in a deeper into a canyon. Get to appreciate these larger laurel sumacs that pepper the slopes here. Look at it, it's a nice one. Beautiful laurel sumacs. This is absolutely spectacular. It's not as much graffiti here as I'd expected. There's some, there's some boulder. There are some boulders with some graffiti on them, but it's, they're not all completely tagged up, thankfully. I guess maybe the uh, a lot of the people who come here tend to be a little more respectful, which I really appreciate. I mean, I saw a few tagging spots, but not that much. I'm very pleasantly surprised. Yeah, especially, especially in an easily accessible place like this, The surprise is very pleasant. I said there is some, there is some graffiti here and there, but I am very pleasantly, happily surprised that this place isn't littered with tagging and stuff like that. I appreciate that very much, actually. I'm just gonna see where this little use trail leads. Look at this beauty. Nice regal laurel sumac. Some more of that wishbone bush or California four o'clock. Look at that. They are just in full attack. Or full bloom, I should say. But and here's that little little rivulet I saw a little further down along this little ravine. Cool that there's actually a little bit of flowing water in here. I did not expect to see that here. Looks like our trail kind of ends over here. So I'm not going to really go too far off of it. But I do like to poke around and see what kind of neat little things I could find here. Here's another field of 4 o'clock right here. Nice. Lots of 4 o'clocks over here. Or wishbone bushes. Beautiful. Here's a nice luscious laurel sumac. I like how this area is wooded with laurel sumac. It's really cool. Yeah, pretty nice. Looks like there's well, kind of a use trail there, but I want to try to keep a little bit more of a minimal trace thing going. I do love hiking cross country, believe me, but I usually reserve that for national forests and stuff where it's a little, a little more okay, as long as you do it responsibly, of course. And I try to be responsible. Minimal trace, no trace, the way it should be. All right, I'm getting closer to Mast Boulevard. Let's see what else I can find before this is the end of the line. Oh, I was kind of hoping to see some more herp activity, but, you know, it's too it's a little early. It's starting to warm up a little bit, but I think it's still a little cool for the herps to come out. Um, I just got involved hiking over here to this little 
this little brook. I saw this poor Jerusalem cricket was drowning, or was well, not drowning yet, but it was possibly in the process of it. So I had to try to try to gently rescue it with a stick. This poor thing here feels so bad. It was such a laborious effort. I was trying to get it out, and it kept getting tangled on the roots of these plants. And I was trying to use a very gentle stick, just very gently nudge it, nudge it off. I'll make sure it's okay. These things are supposed to have some pretty painful bites. And I was trying to bite at the stick, but I was just trying to very gently get it out of the water so it didn't drown. But yeah, this is a Jerusalem cricket right here. I think it's in the genus Stenopelmatus, I believe. And these things are known to have some pretty painful bites. They're normally pretty chill, but... I feel bad because I was trying not to aggravate him or her and trying to get him or her to to safety so it wouldn't drown in the water so that's crazy but as I'm here along the creek this little little drainage this little I'm guessing this is a seep or whatever. Been noticing some interesting plants. Oh well, yeah, some very interesting stuff indeed over here actually. First one I'm looking at is I believe this is a seep monkey flower right here. I believe this is Erythrate guttata, Memelis guttata, one of those guttatas. I believe it's in the genus Erythrate now. It seems to be the type that grows along these little ephemeral streams. So I think that's what we have here. I think this is seat monkey flower. Pretty neat. See if I can get a little closer view of it. Seems to be growing along here. And then I see a looks like horsehair worm. I'm gonna try not to step on any of those monkey flowers. But if you look here in the water, there is a big brown stringy looking critter that's kind of wriggling in the water a little bit. Might be hard to see on camera, but I think that's a horsehair worm. And I'm wondering if that's why the Jerusalem cricket was in the water. Because I think horsehair worms are supposed to infest them. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. But I was wondering if that's what was going on. Sometimes I guess horsehair worms are supposed to drag them to get them towards the water or something. I don't know. Even they're infested. I don't know. 100% about the biology of them. But yeah, it appears to be a horsehair worm swimming around here in the seep. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Come here and find some interesting finds. Makes you wonder sometimes. Crazy stuff that goes on around here. But yeah, I think that was a horsehair worm. <laughs> Pretty crazy. The little things you can find when you're ambling about. Wow. Pretty crazy. Okay, well, I better start moving on. Let's see what other things I can find before I leave this place. All right. So here's another stretch of this little trail here. Wow, it's cool to see all this in the middle of coastal sage scrub. It really is. Another, you even get a little miniature cascade. 
How cool is that? That is so cool. What a cool little spot this is. How beautiful is this? I did not expect to see a little water feature here, to be honest with you. I came here trying to get to these hills, explore the boulders. It's kind of quiet on the herpetology front, but boy, there's definitely some action to be found here. All right, so let's go see where this leads. So cool, there's a little tiny brook running through here. I did not expect that, to be honest with you. I think this is gonna lead up towards a set of boulders over here, I believe. So we'll just add a little extra of extra layer of interest to this video. It's not all just about the peaks, but it definitely is a part of it. And some more cottontails or brush rabbits. There's a big boulder complex. That's up towards Hill 685, Hill 833 that I visited earlier. So let's see where this trail leads. Look at this little birdie. Couldn't get a good look at it, unfortunately. And there's the high school. Let's go take this trail up here. Let's see what else I can find. Let's see. So, I'm kind of heading a little more to the north now, looking around to see these huge boulders here. Let's see what else I can find over here. Yeah, this is definitely a rock climber's haven here. and boulder hopper as well would love stomping around here and of course people like me who love exploring hills and nature it's another haven for me as well so we're in a very moist section of sage scrub towards the base of some of these rocks Looks like we got a beehive over there. I'm not gonna go over there in case those are Africanized honeybees. Not sure. Those could be wasps too, so I'm not gonna go too close over there and risk that. Right here in the shade of this one, look at this spiny red berry. Ramnus crocea. Seen a couple of them around here. This one looks like it's starting to fruit. Let me. Back out a little bit so we can focus in a little bit better. You can see there is some fruit developing on this one already. So this one already flowered, which is pretty cool. Oh, there we go. Another Audubon's cottontail. So let's see if I can go around here. There's a little buddy, little Silva Lagus, baby. A little buddy, a little bunny. Mm. It's always fun to see. Let's see. Look at this. Look at that monolith. That is huge. Goodness gracious, look at this. How beautiful is this? Look at that! That is humongous! 
Wow. We got a nightshade here. I wonder if this is a little confused on some of my nightshades. This could be Solanum Douglasi, Solanum Americanum, or even Solanum nigrum. Now I have a nightshade growing, a couple of them in my side yards where I live. And they're the Solanum nigrum, the non-native nightshade. But I'm not sure. This could be Solanum Americanum, or it could be Solanum Douglasi as well. Yeah, I can see uh, the beehive is just over here, I think. So I'm going to keep my distance. And I'm not going to go over there too close in case those are the Africanized honeybees. They look a lot like the regular honeybees, but they're a lot more aggressive. One gets you, I think they're all going to come after you. So I'm going to stay over here, but I can see the hive activity. Here we got a here we got a borage right here too. Right there. Classic borage. I have to try to remember. I think I've mistaken that one with a full stoma, but I think it's a different different genus in the borage and I say I'll have to double check it and uh, flash it on the screen. Let me get a picture of it before I move on. A cool spot this is. Look at this. This I just can't get over how huge this one is. This is the size of a lot of ones near Woodson Mountain near Poway. A lot of the ones in the Woodson Mountain, North Iron Mountain area near 67 between Poway and Ramona get huge like that. Yeah, Woodson Mountain is chock full of boulders like this. I think it's the same, t similar or same type. I don't know if this is the exact same type, but I think the one's over by Woodson Mountain. And I'm not a geologist, mind you. But I like to sometimes read up a little bit on extra things. But I think the ones by Woodson Mountain have their own type. I think that's called Woodson Mountain Granodiorite, I believe. Granodiorite, Granodiorite, I don't know how you pronounce it. but I think this one's a Folosoma. I just saw it. Where did, where did I see it? I think that's a full of stoma right there. You gotta kind of recall, relearn a couple of those. I saw some last year and then I kind of forgot about them. <laughs> All right, so we've got a lot of use trails leading through this little section here. And that's a lot of of common miner's lettuce grown here. Another winter spring plant. This is more of an annual, not a not a ephemeral perennial. It's a full-blown annual. Lives its whole life cycle in one growing season. And we appear to have the regular variety. This is Claytonia perfoliata subspecies perfoliata. It's one that I typically run into. So another subspecies we have grown here called subspecies Mexicana, but you see these little cup-shaped uh, leaves that grow grow right above, right below the inflorescence. If one side were if it were more oval-shaped with two prominent horns, you'd be likely looking at subspecies Mexicana. But this appears to be subspecies Perfoliata. Ooh, look at the granite flakes. That is so cool. I <laughs> see a piling of granite flakes on the ground. And then we got a Mara macrocarpus with huge leaves on it. Seems to love growing here in the shade of this rock. Look how huge the leaves on this are. That's a spiny cucumber, wild cucumber plant. Normally the leaves don't get that large, but it's a pretty favorable spot. Good soil moisture retention. Ooh, now we got uh, now we got Malacothamnus fasciculatus, variety fasciculatus, starting to already bloom, just getting started to. It's a small uh, 
chaparral bush mallow, bush mallow. And it looks like we got a fiddle neck here. I wonder if this is Amsinkia intermedia. And it looks like we got gum plant growing here too. Looks like we got, I believe that's, yeah, it looks like we got Grindelia camporum growing here. Pretty cool. And then more Saca peyote. More Cortia macrocephala. Man, I just saw some clematis too. I just saw some some virgin's bower. Where did I see it? I just saw. There's a bunch of it actually growing along here, right here. This is uh, clematis passiflora. This is the one I see most often here in the coastal and lowland foot lowland foothill areas. Is that species there? Usually in protected pockets of coastal sage scrub and chaparral. All right. Yeah, I figured I'd have to spend more time checking out this area after hiking the hills. So I kind of want to get a feel for this area. And this could definitely be a returning place, especially when I want to come here during when the herps, the reptiles and amphibians are more active. Though I suspect reptiles would far outnumber amphibians here in this generally dry area. But there's a lot of California figwort growing here. Quite a bit of Saca peyote. Seem to love this coastal sage grub habitat right here. And a lot of clematis possiflora growing in the cracks. In the shrubs and on the side of the hill. So yeah, I'll have to come back when uh, a court, this uh, cortia, the Saca peyote plant, starts blooming and get some get a spotlight video. This would be a great spotlight video area, and it's close to my house, very very close, just a few minutes of a drive from where I live. So I can see myself returning here to do spotlight videos, maybe some plant ode videos and herp videos in the future. So you probably look forward to me coming out here more often. Look at it. I love this. I just love the scenery here. I just love these these craggy hills, these well, these hills and then these rock outcrops. Just makes it so satisfying out here. That's probably why this video is gonna be longer than I anticipated it would be. Definitely can see myself filming a few spotlight videos, maybe a couple plant odes, and probably some wildlife videos for that matter. All right, I want to go move on and see if there's another spot or two I can check out before I start getting ready to head back. We'll see what else comes my way. All right, so I'm gonna wind my way around this way for a short spell too. I think I'll probably go up to near the higher boulders before turning around. Pretty fragrant out here too. Yeah, lots of those guys. Lots of Silva Lagus. There's a little water running through here too. I would expected to see more wildflowers this time of year, but it's just so nice and verdant. It's green. It's just green. Good time of year to be here. Very good time of year to be exploring coastal sage scrub. So I'm gonna head up here to these rocks. Just look how beautiful this is. Oh, I wonder what that was. 
I'm catching the sagebrush wafting in the morning still. Must have startled that brush rabbit. There's a toy on over here. There's not a lot of that around here that I've seen so far. But there we go. Heteromelies or Butifolia. And here's another year after year favorite in Salie Californica. California bush sunflower, sometimes called California brittle bush. A lot of bushes in the, a lot of these subshrubs in the genus in Salia tend to be called brittle bushes as well. The twigs get quite brittle, especially when they're very dry. But there's a twine. So that's a few leftover fruits on it. Starting to get new leaves on it. New leaves are starting to pop out. Probably about a month or two, it'll start getting flower buds. And then towards probably late May and June, it'll start flowering. Yeah, definitely a lot of Audubon's cottontails hanging out around here. Yeah, every, every, everywhere I turn my head, there's another one. It's cool, wildlife. I love seeing wildlife too, believe me. Wildlife makes me happy. Explore this little spot here and see what's going on here. Apologize if I inadvertently get the sun in the, in the shot. Try not to do that. I think we're near the top of the boulders section. But I do want to check out. I want to get a good feel for this place. Just experience the natural beauty of this place. There's some more of that Solanum. Again, I'm wondering, Solanum nigrum, Solanum douglasii, or Americanum. They're both very, all three of them are quite similar. Cool. <clears throat> it's a nice eucalyptus tree. I think it's a Camadulensis. I'll have to go maybe check that out for kind of my like my kind of my last hurrah. All right, I'm gonna go maybe move on to one more spot. I think I missed a good spot opler, spotlight opportunity this year. <sighs> Son of a biscuit. <sighs> I think this is Cleveland Shooting Star right here. I think that's what this is. Yeah, I think that's what this is. Primula Clevelandi, subspecies Clevelandi. Used to be known as Dodecatheon. Dodecatheon. But I think it recently got reassigned to the genus Primula. And the primrose family, the primulaceae. I think that's what that is. Gosh, I missed the boat on that one. See what happens when you don't go out for a few weeks? You miss the boat on some opportunities. Metaphorically slapping myself in the face for that one. Because Cleveland shooting stars are really cool looking plants. I've only seen a couple of them them a couple of times. Alright. Let's go see this boulder patch here. This looks like this leads up towards the same ridge where Hill 833 is. But it's going to run into that area with those structures and probably private property, so I'm staying out of that. There's the high school. There's West Hills Park, that's where I'm actually parked. It's probably your best bet. It's nice to get out here early and explore a spell. There's another likely great herping spot. Now that the air is warming up a bit more, I don't see my breath anymore when I breathe out. And we're in a sunny area. Should be getting ready to start seeing some herp action pretty soon. Probably some basking snakes. Probably some colubrids, maybe a pit viper. And probably more likely, Scaloporus. Fence lizards and maybe the granite spiny lizard. 
pile. This is a cool little boulder pile. It's a nice little class two boulder pile here. So yeah, I'm guessing this video is going to be kind of long, I guess, because there's a lot to explore here. And all right, so this one, this area seems to have a little more graffiti, unfortunately. Thankfully, though, the boulders further in, those boulders seem to be relatively graffiti free. I don't remember seeing really much of any graffiti at all on those, but these ones here seem to be a little more tagged, unfortunately. It's kind of a shame. Ah, it's very beautiful here. Hey, yeah, this is a Camondulensis, Eucalyptus Camondulensis River Red Gum. One of Australia's, probably one of Australia's most common trees. Look at this, wow. Nice views here too, Ooh, very nice views of the surrounding hills. There's the first peak right there, Hill 685, Hill 833. There's the ridge trail that I took going up the ridge up to the peak. There's that little saddle. Now there are a couple of trails that go winding their way up. The trail I took up to Hill 833 is actually accessed right from the saddle. When you, pat, when you get past Hill 685. And these, I just see the, the spot elevations on the topo maps. That's how I know their elevation, is by looking at the topo maps. And I usually look at the topo maps on peakbagger.com. I don't have my own set of topo maps. So I usually just use that peakbagger to research hills and peaks that I want to climb. Whether or not they're actually listed on peakbagger or if they're just little blips on the topo maps is what... I'm looking at I'm looking at all of those. It doesn't have to be on peak bagger for me to want to climb it. It just has to be there for me to want to climb it, to be honest with you. But all that aside, this is also a great place for, obviously, again, bouldering, rock climbing, scrambling, and also, of course, wildlife. And that's kind of why I'm here. Now I'm looking at this rock here. I see what looks like a bunch of lizards basking. Those could be granite spiny lizards basking right about there. You're not going to see them very well on camera. You might just be able to few, see a few specks over by where that piece is right there. But I see what looks like a bunch of lizard-shaped things basking there. They look pretty decent size, so those could be well within the size of Skeleporus arcutti, the granite spiny lizard. So my hypothesis that this area would be great habitat for them might be very well well founded but yeah i see what look like several yeah yeah they're lizards because i saw one move they're not the they're not the little fixtures that the rock climbers put up but those are definitely scaloporous lizards those are definitely scaloporous could be scaloporous occidentalis lungipes the western fence lizard but those could very well be or cutties the granite spinies which i don't get to see super often but when I do see them, it's a, it's a huge treat for me. Last time I saw them was almost a year ago on Stonewall Peak. I saw a couple near the summit of Stonewall Peak. So they are here in San Diego County as well. Normally I thought they would be further inland, like Cuyamaca and further. But apparently they've been vouchered at Mission Trails if we go on iNaturalist. Uh, the granite spiny lizard is supposed to be vouchered there as well, so... That's something to look out for as well when I go back there and probably a good place to see it is along the bouldery section of the rock climbers loop would probably be your best bet at Mission Trails because there's a lot of granite outcropping over there. So yeah, I think uh, there might be some granite spiny lizards up on there. Okay, well, I'm just going to explore a little bit more before getting ready to set out. Uh, it'd be cool if I could zoom in even further on those lizards so I can try to tell what they are. If their backs are a little more iridescent and they're larger, chances are pretty good that those are granite spinies. And granite spinies are some of the coolest lizards I've ever seen. I mean, as you see western fence lizards, you see western fence lizards, side blotch lizards. 
Those are very common lizards. Western fence and side blotch lizards, which are actually related to granite spinies, especially the fence lizard, because it's also a Skeleporus. But, and you see those all the time. Those are two of the most common lizards you're gonna find here in, in Southern California. Coast, foothills, and even in the mountains. But you can see some granite spinies. And I'm sure they can be locally common as well. Those are a treat. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my way down here and see if I find anything. I think I just had confirmation of granite spinies. I saw one here that had a very iridescent reflection, an iridescent dark color, and that's usually what you can expect on granite spinies. Let me make sure I don't startle something else. And this is the type of habitat you expect to see these guys too. Lots of rocks, huge boulders with cracks and crevices in which these guys love to hide. Ay, ay, ay. All right, I did find a Skeleporus. There is a fence, it's a western fence lizard, of course, but I think they're both sharing this area. And even they're kind of skittish this morning. Sometimes you can get really close to a fence lizard without any problems. Without, well, you can get pretty close to western fence lizards sometimes. Sometimes amazingly close to them. Try to do some class two rack scrambling over here. So there are definitely, we are starting to get basking now. We're starting to get some lizards basking right now. That one was a fence lizard, I'm almost certain of it. Didn't look like a grain of spiny. Oh, what do we have here? Okay, uh, it's hard to see, it's kind of dark, but that was a western fence lizard. That was not a granite spiny. You can kind of tell. Oh well. But yeah, I think some, some of the lizards on that boulder over there look like they could definitely be granites. But yeah, I'm seeing see this rock here. Ugh, bugs. That one right there, that's a fence lizard, I can tell. I can tell from all the way over here, the markings on it. I've got fairly good eyesight, so I'm usually pretty good. But yeah, that's definitely a fence lizard, that's not a granite spiny. I'd love to see a granite spiny before I dip out of here. It would be really awesome to see that. It would be so much fun. But yeah, that's definitely a... Skeleporus occidentalis longipes. Most certainly. Right there, basking in the center of the frame there. That's definitely a western fence lizard. Ours would be the Great Basin subspecies, longipes. There is some taxonomical disagreement. Some people consider ours subspecies occidentalis, but Her CaliforniaHerbs.com my usual go-to site for researching, especially taxonomical names, listed as the Great Basin subspecies, which is Longipes. They're still very beautiful lizards. If you're lucky enough to look underneath one of them, especially the males, have two oppositely arranged blue belly patches and a lot of times a blue throat patch, especially pronounced in the males much less pronounced, if even, if even present, in females. And Western fence lizards are generally the most common lizard you're gonna find here in Southern California. Definitely, in my experience, has been by far the most common lizard. Side blotch lizards are a relatively close second. 
And like I said, we got more Scaloporus basking still over there. And those could be, again, those could be within the size of Orcutties. Orcutties, the granite spiny lizards, generally a bit larger, a bit stockier. And they tend to have more of an iridescent glow on their top. And they have less of the banding and splotching patterns, the oppositely arranged splotching patterns on the backs like western fence lizards. Western fence lizards usually have a relatively relatively oppositely arranged pattern of dark splotches or bands on their backs. Granite spiny lizards sometimes will have some slight banding, sometimes just dark, almost black with some iridescent reflection. And they're very colorful lizards. Even though from a distance they just look like black lizards, you look up close, especially the males, they will have some pretty impressive iridescent reflection in their scales. I wish I could get close enough to those lizards to tell what they are for sure. Now, yeah, usually, usually, uh, now sometimes the the really larger, larger, more vigorous fence lizards will have some bluish, scaly, slight iridescence on their backs too, but usually there's a little bit more of a banding over, overturn on the granites. A lot of times they'll have some slight banding across their backs. So I can't tell, but I think size-wise, those tend to look a little bit more like granite spinies than western fence lizards. I'm going to go over to that set of boulders, and then that'll probably be close to the turnaround time for my day. All right, let's see what else I find. Okay, I'm on the other side here of that little scramble section. What kind of plants we got grown over here? I wonder if this is a type, I wonder if this is veldt grass. Erarta, it's a South African species of grass. Generally annuals that get established here. So I wonder if this is red panic grass. I'll have to double check, but that might be what this is. And again, it's a type of grass that grows in southern Africa. That might be what this is. I was thinking, what kind of wildflowers are these? But these appear to be grass seed heads. I'll have to take a look at that and see if I can identify that. All right, so now I'm at the base of this smaller, well, medium size. Eh. It's got a pretty decent sized trunk on it. Eucalyptus condolensis. River red gum. Widespread in Australia. Pretty much throughout most of the continent of it. Pretty cool. There's another one over there too. So here we are on the sunny side of the boulders. Yeah, these are such cool looking boulders, but again, this seems to be the only area that seems to have a lot of the annoying graffiti marks, so. At least it's not widespread through the whole entire area, which I'm grateful for seeing that being the case. I just, just don't like seeing it, period. All right. kind of poke around these boulders as well before I leave. Just on the off chance that something interesting pops up. Also because I love the scenery here too. And if you're a, a local here in Santee, chances are you probably already have heard of this place, maybe even visited it, or likely have even visited it. Yeah, this looks like a great basking site right here.
don't see any, I don't see any Scalaporus, no lizards out here. I was kind of hoping to see some lizards. Yeah. There's actually a little seep of water coming out of here. That is cool. That is pretty sick. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty sick. I like that. These rocks are cool to look at. They just create their own microclimates that are just so satisfying to, to witness. That's where you get all these bushy laurel sumacs growing up against them. More California figwort. Cool. I love the thing about rock outcropping, especially large boulders. The botany and the herpetology wildlife sightings would be pretty amazing. All right, let's see what's down here. I think I found a granite spiny lizard. That's about the size of one right there. Right there. Right on the edge of that rock. That looks like a granite spiny lizard. That's about the size of one. Yeah, that's a. that's got to be a granite spiny. That's what I was hoping to see. And there's its cousin. It's really going to be hard to see on camera. Right at the top of that rock, there's a western fence lizard. So two fairly closely related lizards cohabitating in these really cool granite outcrops. But yeah, I think that was a granite spiny, the, the first one. On the, probably chilling on the other side of that rock now. I'm going to try to see if I can work my way over there and hopefully get a good look at it. Another lizard. Can't tell from here, but right there, there's another Skeleporus, but I can't tell what species it is from here. This is, there it is. There's a granite spiny lizard. Yeah. Yeah, there was one that just popped its head over. That was a granite spiny lizard for sure. I could tell the coloration on it. But yeah, let me see. Let's see if I can get around here and get a view of it really quietly. western fence lizard. The lower one is a western fence lizard. The upper one is a granite spiny lizard. Granite spiny lizard. Skeleporus are cutty doing head push-up displays. Trying to establish its territory from me. An intruder on its habitat. That is so cool. So I got to see both relatives on this rock. I love it when multiple related species are in the same vicinity. When they grow together or live together. That goes for plants and it goes for animals as well. So this is definitely prime granite spiny lizard habitat. I am so amped right now, I could barely contain myself. So now I'm going to be checking around these rocks. Ooh, here we go. Oh, I just disappeared further in the crack. Son of a biscuit. It was just, I think the fence lizard was the one that went in there. Don't mind me. <laughs> Don't mind my uh, camera. Ah, so cool. Yes, there are grand spinies out here. I am so amped. I love granite spiny lizards. I love seeing them. And they are most certainly out here. Oh, I love it. I hope the camera got a good view of it. That is so sick. And that looks like over there. Right there looks like another fence lizard, I believe. I believe that's a fence lizard. That looks like a western fence lizard. So we got both of them sharing these rock outcrops. Right near the base of that rock, right in the center of the frame. That uh, appears to be a western fence lizard right there. But yeah, so we do get our cutties out here too. Gosh, man, this really psychs me out. Psych or psychs me up. Puts me in a really good mood to see my granite spinies. I didn't know they grew this close to the ocean here. That is so cool.
And I think our granite spiny has disappeared now. Here's another granite spiny right here. I was doing a few push-up displays right there. Might not be super well visible on camera. But right next to that little grass plant growing on the rock. And it's kind of disappearing behind that little piece of grass. That is a granite spiny lizard. It's going to come out and display for me. Oh, baby, that's what I'm talking about. That is so cool. Push-up displays from a male Skeleporus or Cuddy. Lit, lit. And then there's our western fence lizard over there still. So yeah, two, uh, two cousins in the spiny slash horn lizard family, Phrynosomatidae. How cool is that? What a beauty. Granite spiny lizard. I love, and I repeat, I love seeing granite spiny lizards. All right. That is so awesome. I love it. Oh, and here's our little western fence lizard buddy right here poking out. Definitely a western fence lizard. I saw the little rusty yellowish coloring. It kind of makes it similar to sagebrush lizards. You're not going to find sagebrush lizards here. I don't even know if you'll find them in San Diego County, to be honest with you. I don't think Scaloporus vandenbergianus will be found here, I don't believe. But yeah, awesome, yeah. Herping out here is pretty good, just like I suspected. Here's our little granite spiny lizard buddy right here. Ah, of course. As soon as I get within visible range of it. Ah, of course. Oh well. And I see quite a few Skeleporus lizards all scattered on that rock there. Probably fence lizard, but... I I'd assume there'd be some granite spinies there as well. So it turned from a peak climbing session, ended up into a pretty, pretty decent herp session too. Whenever I see granite spiny lizards, it's to me it's an it's an occasion to celebrate. Now some people, some other, some other herps might say, "Oh, they're pretty common. They're pretty common." But I haven't really seen that many of them. So for me, I'm excited. And I love seeing our western fence lizards. Love seeing our side blotch lizards. They are beautiful animals. They are very beautiful animals. So herp sightings in general, to me, are something worth celebrating. Even if it's something you've seen a thousand times. And I've probably seen thousands and thousands of western fence lizards in my day. I don't think it's anything not to celebrate. You're seeing wildlife, you're seeing a different species of animal it's wildlife, and to me, that's what makes life on the trail or off the trail so much more interesting is when you're seeing other species of critters. And just don't forget how beautiful the botany is here too. Very beautiful plants, beautiful blossoms, lots of this beautiful California bush sunflower. Makes a nice sunny April morning a an absolute delight to be out and about. Something I just heard something run off. I expect to be seeing possibly snakes too. So, but I'm also trying to be careful that I don't get too close to a certain type of snake, aka the rattlesnake. I get too close and put myself in danger, so i got to watch where I'm walking. A couple more Skeleporus lizards over there. Pretty cool. Looks like a fence lizard. Alright. Let's see what else I could find on the way out from this little hiking adventure. There's a western fence lizard right there. Hey, little handsome buddy. Hey, you're a beauty. See? Just because, you, just because these are the, some of the most common herps you'll see, 
Doesn't make them any less beautiful. Look at that. Probably a male. Very handsome lizard. Look at that. That's our typical Great Basin fence lizard right there. Again, Scalaporus occidentalis lungipes. Like I said, I get these a lot on camera because they're usually quite easy to get near. Very beautiful. Very handsome lizard. Now, working my way down this. There's another western fence lizard right here. Right on the edge of that rock right there. Another handsome western fence lizard. So yeah, this seems to be both a communal western fence and grand spiny lizard habitat. And I love it. I love seeing both species together coexisting. I'm wondering if they can integrate and hybridize. That's another thing that comes up to mind when related species, whether they're plants or animals, live near one another. What's the propensity and possibility of them hybridizing? A male fence lizard breeding with a female granite spiny or a male granite spiny with a female fence lizard. It makes me wonder about that. And it's really cool to think that it could that some animals do hybridize that are closely related. Just trying to go down this slope carefully, not slipping on the rock here. You're gonna start doing the push-ups? Can't tell if there's blue underneath it. Underneath him or her. So I'm not sure. I've had it where, when I was on Reyes Peak and, oh, I think it just caught an insect. You gonna start doing push-ups? I can't tell if you're a male or female. Probably a male. That's the ones that generally do the push-ups. That's so cool. Gosh, I love herps. All right, it's like this battery's gonna run out, so switch out batteries just like I had to <laughs> where the clip kind of cut out some more push-up displays from that fence lizard it's probably a male I think I see some bluish coloring underneath it females is much less uh, much less prevalent if at all present now granite spiny lizards I think have some bluish colors on them as well here's another western fence basking right here slightly smaller younger one Look at that handsome lizard right there. Look at that. What a beauty. Look at right at me. I can see the little triangle shaped patterns on the back of it. Little dark triangle shaped patterns that are opposite each other on the back of the lizard. That's usually that's usually a pretty telltale sign. That's not always a telltale sign that you're looking at a western fence. Female side blotch lizards can have those as well. And those are also phrenosomatids, too. They're also in the spiny slash horn lizard family. All right. So now we're going to switch gears back to botany. And here's why right here. Look at this. Coast Choya. Look at this. Impressive thicket right here. Look at this. How gorgeous is this Cylindra Puntia prolifera? These here appear to be aborted fruits right here because a lot of times the plants won't a lot of times these uh cholias won't produce viable fruits or viable seeds so a lot of times the fruits will become aborted and sometimes become stem segments or they'll act like stem segments as you see here these appear to be stem segments uh, that used to be that used to be immature fruits that never ripened. But yeah, this is Coast Choi right here, Cylindra Putia prolifera. Some nice uh, specimens of along it here. When I first started up the trail this morning, I wasn't botanizing too much. I was kind of focused on getting checking out the boulders really quickly and then getting up to the hills. And now that I'm on my way back, after having some pretty cool herp finds, so found some pretty cool lizards, now, I can enjoy the plants as I'm descending towards Mast Boulevard. And that's a nice stanza coast choya right here. 
It's not super abundant in this area, but locally common. This is a pretty cool trail, I'm not gonna lie. I really enjoyed coming up here. This was pretty fun. I had a good time, really good time. Now that I started up hiking before seven, probably around 6.30 is when I started climbing up the hills. So I got a pretty early start, but I also wanted to take my time on the way back so I can, because it was kind of, it was nice and cool earlier this morning. I wanted to spend enough time here to maybe see some reptile sightings and yeah, I got lucky. I saw some granite spiny lizards up on those boulders and that really just completely amped me more. more than words can say. Oh, what do we have, an Alanthus tree over here? Right here. I think this is an Alanthus altissima. So yes, I guess I'm botanizing now. I'm just gonna take a quick detour over here, just to check it out. I think it's an Alanthus tree. Make sure, make sure I'm good over here, no rattlesnakes in the grass. Yeah. Yeah, that's what this appears to be here, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tree of heaven right here, Atlantis Altissima. It's just starting to leaf out. It's just starting to open up its leaf buds, just barely. Yeah, and today's April 10th. Now, these trees are usually one of the later ones to leaf out here in Southern California. Yeah, this one's just starting to leaf out right now. Yeah, that's Atlantis Altissima. If left unchecked, this thing can colonize half the hillside. Very hardy tree. It's in the Cimarubaceae, the Quassia family. Oh you know, yeah, see, here's the evidence of how it can colonize. From one individual tree or root system, this is the twig of the Alanthus altissima, and this is the swelling leaf buds that are just starting to open up here for springtime. And the newer leaves are kind of reddish colored. They kind of have a weird rancid peanut butter smell if you touch them. And you don't want to eat them. You don't want to eat any part of this plant because it is toxic. You do not want to eat any part of this plant at all. So this is Atlantis altissima. It's from China and Asia. Planted here probably for erosion control and to grow it and grow and it grows in the most horrible conditions and still thrives. This is the tree, the species of tree after which A tree grows in Brooklyn. He's named. That's the tree. Atlantis altissima. Because they'll grow out of cracks in sidewalk. I've seen it, believe me. I've seen them grow out of cracks in sidewalk. All right, let's get back to the trail here. So I can make my way back. And yet, the more I go, the further away from it I get trying to keep as close to the trail as possible. Here's an old Coast Choya stem right here. Look at this. Here's an old growth. Ooh, and what do we have? What kind of avifauna do we have coming our way? What do we have here? Oh, a common raven, Corvus corax. I was thinking maybe turkey vulture. Those are very large birds. But no, that one was a common raven. All right, so I'm a little off the track I'm meant to be walking. All right. So, yeah. So I'm going to be heading towards West Hills Park. And there's a little botany along the side of the road I'm kind of interested in pointing out before leaving. Yeah, so there's West Hills Park. It looks like the sprinklers are still on. They were on this morning when I came here. Literally had to shoot my way through it. The sprinklers are still on. What a waste of water. They don't need to still be on, literally. I was here a couple hours ago. They don't need to still be on, for crying out loud. This is a waste of water. Okay, so... Tory pine, Pinus toriana, subspecies toriana. I've got a nice little row of them planted here in the park. And there's some pretty neat looking trees inside the park I think I should point out as well. 
But I might make a separate video for that. But then what do we have here? Let me get around this before I get completely soaked. Let me turn the camera off so I don't get wet. All right, so we've got planted along here. I think these are hybrid sycamores here. Actually, I think these are Platinus occidentalis. American sycamores is what these appear to be. They haven't leafed out yet. They're usually a little bit later to leaf out than our other trees are. I've seen some sycamores that look like they'd be hybrids between American and California sycamores. Here are the leaves. Definitely appears to be Platinus occidentalis. Yeah. Yeah, these ones typically leaf out much later than our other trees here. Again, today, we're going into mid-April right now, so... Should be leafing out pretty soon, but... Yeah. Platinus occidentalis. Yeah, these are definitely American sycamores. Yeah, these are pretty cool. Nice young trees. These trees can get very large. They can get at least as large as our California sycamores, the native ones. Yeah. yeah they should be leafing out pretty soon. Some, I see the buds are swelling on them finally. Yeah. Always thought sycamore trees were... All species of sycamores that I've seen. I've seen London plane trees, California sycamores, American sycamores are the three ones I've come across the most in my life. And occasional hybrids between California sycamores and London plane trees. Just love sycamore trees. And then, then we got this bottle tree here. Bracky kitten pulmoneus. It's an Aussie native right here. Very handsome tree. Pretty cool. This is going to do it for my hike here. What I want to do is go across the street and maybe film some of the trees in West Hills Park. Thanks for watching. I have to collect those seed balls and try to germinate them. But I don't really have a place to plant any big trees. Plantness occidentalis. Always loved American sycamores too. I used to see them in New Jersey a lot. So I've seen. Some pretty huge ones in New Jersey. These things can get massive. I've seen them get pretty big out here in Southern California too. I've seen them get close to 100 feet tall. I think they can get to at least 115, 130, 100, maybe even 150 feet tall in their native habitat. Which is from Texas, Texas, and I think Minnesota to Maine, the southeast. Well, before I clock out for this video, let me show close relative of that tree. Again, Platinus occidentalis. Platinus occidentalis. And wait for it. Platinus racemosa, California sycamore, our native. All right. I'll see you on my next video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed me hill climbing and then botanizing and herping all in the same video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next adventure, hopefully next week.